And that's the point. Because it's written, I tell people this a lot, Rob. I says, you don't necessarily make money from writing a book. You make money from having written a book. This business podcast, The Two Business Guys Mastermind, uncovers for you secrets and share tips and tricks to entrepreneurship as they mastermind on how to have startup, operational, and overall business success so that you can go on to get better results. Enjoy. We're back better than ever, everybody. And you know, of course, in this podcast, we talk about the ideas, business ideas, how you can improve them, how you can spin them up, how you can try them, how you can test them. And Rob and I were talking about one particular thing he had a question about. He's written several books and it was making a book as a service, right? And Rob, what was the question that you specifically asked me? I want to make sure that we get this so people can get this as well. Right. And, you know, we've been talking about this as a service kind of concept and I, I love the fact that so many things can be, you know, done as a service. And I was wondering, like, how do we do a book as a service? Because we've both written lots of books. And I know a lot of times we look at uh, how can we make our book something that people feel like is actually valuable, that they actually want to get because it does something for them rather than just it's a good read or it's got information in it. How do we make it provide a service to them? Yeah. So one of the things that um, as I look at book as a service, I think about each chapter and I think about how the chapter in itself becomes a living, breathing opportunity to grow. So let's say, for example, um, let's tell me about one of your book service, uh, one of your books chapters. All right. So um, the latest book that we did was Thriving in Chaos. And so in that I walked the, so let's talk about the problem chapter. Um, really try to help people understand what the real nature of the problem is when they're feeling like they're on a hamster wheel all the time and like they don't have any control of their time, even though they're effective, even though they're busy all the time, they don't feel like they're moving towards their journey or towards their, uh, towards their ideals, towards their goals. Yeah. So a wonderful thing about that is that it becomes workshoppable. And we also know that in different areas of the business, you're coming in and saying, here's the book. Here's what we're going to be working on. And then in one section of the business, we're going to solve it within that section. And then, you know, when you solve one problem, another one kind of springs up. So then the service, if you will, is the continuation of working on problems as they come up so that you're staying ahead of it. And mm-hmm. it, it it has a degree of continuity to it. Then mm-hmm. you're looking at it and saying, okay, what other area of the business could this, just this chapter and what we talk about, what we do, you literally break it down into parts and we productize it. the parts. I mean, mm-hmm. sometimes there could be a powerful sentence. And I've read your books and I'm like, that's a powerful sentence that you literally take that and says, okay, here's how I'm going to package that. I'm going to put it on a landing page and then I'm going to send this out and saying, if this is you, I can help you. Here's what our company does and here's how we can help you with this section of the business. Now, of course, you do some pre-work to find out if this is a complaining thing that, that the bosses and workers and all that kind of stuff are complaining about. And then within that sentence, in that chapter or that paragraph within the chapter, you're then going and saying, we're just going to work on this. So it gets to the focus piece. But then once you solve that, something else might spring up. You go, oh, we're prepared. Literally mm-hmm. staying in one chapter and yeah. making a nice living for your company. Yeah, no, I, I like that. I was watching this video the other day. This might kind of line up with what you're talking about here. It was a guy talking about um, paid newsletters and the difference between kind of paid newsletters and free newsletters. And one of the things that he talked about with a paid newsletter is you got to pick a topic that you would feel comfortable writing on forever. forever. Because Love that. paid newsletter is basically a book that never ends. It's kind of like if you ever read a book and you like you didn't want it to, to end because you were so engrossed in the characters, right? Like a lot of people with J.K. Rowling and the Harry Potter series, yep. like yep. one of the things that she struggled with was ending it because everybody just wanted to kind of live life with Harry and all the rest of them. 
And a, new, a newsletter kind of gives you that opportunity to constantly just be doing two things. Yes. Number one, it never has to end. And number two, you get to write it with the audience, right? Yes. Because they get to comment and they get to ask questions and they get to do stuff. And then your next chapter, your next newsletter, your next whatever addresses what they've just been talking about. And I thought that was, that was a kind of interesting thing. And it's kind of same concept where you can monetize and you can productize different sections or different That's things hard. that people are going through. That part. So let's take this into another. So I want everybody that's listening in on this, hearing it the way you're hearing it, where you're hearing it, and understand that we're, as we talk about a book, we could talk about a PDF that you've written. We could talk about a piece of writing that you're you you're doing now and or you've done already. We bring it back in. We create the newsletter so that you can dive into that. That particular subject matter, it could be a wide area or it could be very, very narrow niche. Doesn't matter. So then you're you're basically saying, here's the piece of material that I have. And now that we have AI, we can expand on sentences. We can expand on uh, themes, thoughts, all these different opportunities. Then your newsletter is, in essence, stuff that you've already written about, passionate about. And then you just expand on it. That being... Uh, using that and leveraging that as the ability to grow your or the mechanism to grow your audience that also cares about that. And then once you got your audience, then you, this is something that Greg Eisenberg talks about. Once you got your audience, then you switch it into a membership and then you switch it into um, or then you monetize the membership. In this case, mm -hmm. you're monetizing what you're putting in the newsletter already written, already inspired by you, you know, already probably gotten some traction. If you've gotten any sales or people said, oh, I love that writing. Now it's validated to a degree and you just take it to whatever level you want to, to determine. And if let's say, for example, you get done and you, you, you nobody's like digging this thing. It still becomes a digital piece of real estate that sits out there for you. So that if that idea comes back around and we've seen it, happen with songs on TikTok and blah, blah, blah. These people haven't made money in like a hundred years, right? And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. somebody does it in, in the TikTok and next thing you know, right? Everybody's getting a check. That part, mm -hmm. you know, and is it worthy of your time? Absolutely. Because now you're pursuing your ideas. You're getting them out of your head, yeah. your mind, your soul, all that kind of stuff. You have honored it by not keeping it in the drawer, Right. And then you just put it in a me a, a manner that people can consume it. At some point, you could run ads to it. You could do PR marketing on it and see if it can get traction. That part, you can turn it into little videos. Yep. I'm telling you, yeah. make these, these books as a service. The productization, like Rob talked about, that's what it's all about. And you just do yeah. that over and over and over again with all of your material. Imagine yeah, that. No, I agree. all of your material. Yeah. Repurposing content and turning it into Constantly. a service. Constantly. Awesome. We're, listen, I'm going I'm to tell you, look, I'm looking y'all in the eye right now. And I'm going to, I'm going to say something harsh, but it's something that I'm inspired by Dr. Benjamin Hardy, who says, you know, 10X is easier than 2X because when you do the 10X stuff, you have to look at everything else you're doing and go, that's not going to get me there. Right. And he's like me. I can't stand smart goals either <laughs> because they don't raise you to any level. It keeps you right here. So imagine now you got 10 pieces of writing. Could you have 10 newsletters? All with different things. I look in my drawer over here and I go, bro, you got a lot of stuff in there. And that's why I wanted to, us to turn two business guys mastermind on business ideas yeah. on operation ideas on innovation ideas so yeah. really you listen to us and you go oh my gosh at one point we were talking about well we're going to help your business da, da, da. but now we're saying here's an idea take it expand on it we'll help you if you want us to we'll come alongside of you perhaps but take the ideas and create from them i mean today mm -hmm. yeah yeah, no, I, th I like that. And I think that, you know, something that we've been trying to do the entire time kind of with this podcast is really to demystify a lot of the stuff that's going on in business. Because I think, I know for me, when I came to business, starting businesses, 
what I thought business was versus what I learned business was were two totally different things. And mm -hmm. one of my goals personally with the, the, the people that we're, you know, our, our audience and our listeners is to help you realize that it's not as far away or it's not as difficult as it seems. Like people who run successful businesses aren't so much different than anybody else. The biggest difference is they, they there's a lens that we look at the world through that's a little bit different. And what we're really trying to do is to kind of give you all a little bit of that lens. I think one of the biggest things is realizing, like Randy just said, in anything that we do, there is there's potential value. And your job is to be able to see what the value is to your audience to your niche to whatever we're doing. I remember there's a there's a movie that Robert Townsend did back in the nineties called The Five Heartbeats. Yeah. Phenomenal movie. phenomenal movie. If you haven't watched that movie, go watch it. It'll be a treat. You'll love it. All right. If you loved 60s do you know, Motown type music, yeah. it's a perfect yeah. movie for you. Right. And so there's this one scene in the movie where there's two brothers that are, it's about a singing group and all the five heartbeats. There's two brothers in the group. And so they got all types of issues from growing up and all types of other things. And it spills out on stage one time and they start fighting and they're getting to it. They, you know, rolling around and tearing each other's clothes, all types of craziness. And the manager is standing on the sideline and he's, he's kind of chuckling and he's smiling and he's stopping people from stopping. And he's like, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We got this. They just, they just got to learn. They've got to learn to use everything they do, right? And it's this really powerful moment in the in the film because you don't really understand what he means when he says that. But in the next scene, they cut to it and they go through and now they're having a stage fight. So they're arguing, they're yelling, they're all this type of stuff. We ain't going to do it right. Don't do it at all. All the rest of it. And then they, it turns into part of their act. It turns into part and it creates... A certain buzz now this was a real fight right it was real animosity it was right right sometimes we as business owners have real mistakes or have real issues or have real things that that mess up i know some of the best trainings that i've given some of the best things some of the stuff most of the stuff that i put in my books is hey i had this problem and here's uh -huh. how i was fumbling and here's how i overcame it uh -huh. And so we've got to learn how to just use everything that we do. And I think that's the thing Randy was talking about with repurposing. Many of you all have done a lot of content. You've written articles or you've created things or you've built stuff or you've figured out different ways to do stuff. And I know for me, a lot of times I will think, oh, it's not good enough. It's not important. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear yeah. it. No, right. It, it didn't get a lot of clicks the first time. So it obviously wasn't good enough. And what I have learned over time is that there's some stuff that it, I was just ahead of the cycle. Mm -hmm. I was ahead of when people were ready for it, mm -hmm. right? I was teaching people thriving in chaos. I was teaching my course about how to master your time and how to do that type of stuff. That was actually one of the first things that I started teaching people back in 2016. Mm -hmm. And it didn't really take off. I didn't know how to market. I didn't know how to talk to people, whatever. I start teaching people about leadership and I start running into a bunch of leaders that need this information about how to master your time. I write a book the next time. The book is so ton of copies. I've, I've put people through my training course, all types of different things because I understand it more. The people are ready for it more and I can speak to it better. It doesn't mean that it wasn't, it wasn't powerful back in 2016. It's just, it wasn't the time for it to hit. Like Randy said, there's some songs that are now diamond and platinum and everything because TikTok made them blow up, whereas mm -hmm. nobody knew who that person was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Because somebody did a dance and it caught on. And now this song is, you know, everybody yeah. knows it. And I think it's, again, intersectioning is so big now. I can imagine. Now, listen to this, everybody. I can imagine. Thriving in chaos. Now we're in, you know, depending on when you're listening to this political blah, blah, blah. Well, there's chaos. There's chaos in a variety of ways. And it doesn't matter who you vote for, but there's chaos. Mm -hmm. Now, Rob then comes back with the book Thriving in Chaos, but with a hook. Now, I, so you, and, and then now he's leaning into political upheaval and out of this and who you vote for and all that kind of stuff, chaos every round. Let me show you how to, despite that. So how to, whatever's in the middle, 
Now he comes out with, uh, this is me saying book as a service. You start section or taking pieces of what is in the book and saying, okay, match it up against if this person wins, you may have this. They're going to take your guns. They're going to do this. All right. Uh, this person, they're going to tighten up the border. So you, if you're on the other side of the border, you may have to still try to survive and thrive despite what's happening. Now, the book productized in a certain way, presented at a certain time, could then become a best-selling opportunity and or a, a, an opportunity for you from the productization of different things in it matched up against something that is painful some for somebody mm -hmm. and that's the point because it's written i tell people this a lot rob i says you don't necessarily make money from writing a book you make money from having written a book mm -hmm. and people go what are you talking about man what woo -woo mess are you and i go <laughs> writing is one thing you go oh i'm gonna make a whole bunch of money you know, even James Clear, with all the money, he, the sales that he's made, he he cultivated for several years a huge list that was almost guaranteeing that if I sell to that list, I'm going to make money. Mm -hmm. Whereas you're thinking that having written then allows you to, to take pieces and points and perspectives and whatever else mm -hmm. and now put that out into the market. I was reading about a guy, man, that sold, it was some just obscene amount of books, like a hundred million books. And all this guy was doing, Edelman, Edelman, something, something, Edelman, I think is it. But anyway, old school dude, he just would change the titles. That was his <laughs> whole shtick. He would look at a title and go, yeah, that's, that's boring. He would change the title. He would get the rights to it, change the title, sell a gazillion of them. <laughs> But he would change the title. So what I, what, of course, what I do now with AI, it says, using this guy's framework, this, this, and I had it wrote down somewhere, something, something Edelman's framework of how to get a book in, change the title, match it up against, you know, some of the five things or whatever people want in life. Mm -hmm. Right now, mixing AI with this guy's style with them saying, take this title and make it in his kind of style and boom. <laughs> Right. So you yeah, look at AI thriving and chaos and you go, well, wait a minute. People are aversion, have an aversion to loss. So if I use loss language mm -hmm. as opposed to gain language, thrive, mm -hmm. then maybe I can say, you know, uh, survive, th survive, survive chaos mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that you can thrive. But the title comes mm -hmm. differently and people are going, I need to, I want to survive mm -hmm. chaos right remember mm -hmm. that's that's one of the um roy vaden um uh conventions right naming conventions if you can say i want to i need to and then whatever you put and somebody goes yes that's what i need you probably have a hit in terms of a title i mm -hmm. need to survive yeah. chaos yes do i need to thrive in chaos people go mm, i'm good mm -hmm. where i'm at that part a little bit of a change, put back out in the same way how to survive chaos in an election year, how to survive chaos if your party don't win, how to survive chaos. Mm -hmm. that part. I'm just saying. So <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, this, I love exactly I love exactly it, where you're at. it and let's get let's get it. Put a newsletter together. The newsletter, I'm gonna tell y'all this is this is the part. The newsletter is going, and somebody said this in a way that made me look at newsletter, newsletter. I do some newsletter for some people now. I've messed around with my own, blah, blah, blah. But every month I do one religiously for an organization. They pay me. Mm -hmm. But this guy said something really, really key. And it made me go, I think I need to be doing this like, like more. He says, I protect, get this, protect my community by creating a newsletter. Mm. Exactly how I felt. Now, the person in you as a protector is going to be more turned on than I create this newsletter so I can eventually sell it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he said, I protect my community because he found that with his YouTube channel, people were getting in their scamming folks. 
they were saying, hey, so-and-so wants you to click on this link and go over here. Or I want whatever. He said, so this is how I protected my community because I know nobody's going to jump in and uh, circumvent my newsletter because I, this is me and you. Yeah, it's one-on-one. -on -one. That was yeah. brilliant. It has made this me say powerful. I'm starting mine by by fourth quarter of this year. Yeah, that's right? tight. Protect your, <coughs> excuse me, protect your community. Yeah. And I, I I love that. That's even more fuel to the fire because I've just been sitting over here and, and like I said, I've watched a video on the on newsletters. I've been really looking at how to be consistent with my newsletter writing and how to put out because what I, I've got a couple of different communities. I want to be able to be more consistent with communicating to my communities because you know we've been friends long enough. Like that's one of the that's one of my weak areas, right? Um, when I show up, I'm present. I'm always there, but like. Staying in contact, that's not necessarily what um, I'm great at. Uh, and so running a business, trying to develop that. And something that I, I think, if, if you're like me and you struggle with that, something that I've been doing recently is, and, and ChatGPT is really helpful with a lot of this, is going and researching how to do it and then putting that research into ChatGPT and having ChatGPT basically build me a yeah. routine or... Yes here are the steps that you need to do. And then one of the cool things is I can, you can then kind of converse with it. What I've been using chat GPT to help me do is to have arguments with myself. Yeah. That, that's but, huge. but without forgetting all the stuff that I thought about or that I knew from before, because I can put it in there and I can be like, refer to this or make sure you pay attention to this. Or, and Correct. I can have arguments with myself and I can figure out and do it. And I can do it so much faster because chat GPT can kind of put it together. And while it's putting it together, I can be thinking about the next thing. I can then review what it's doing and, and I can I can do double time because, you know, when I'm doing it in my head, I have to be thinking about two thoughts at the same time. That's Whereas a tip. I can I can give chat GPT one thought, make it think about it. And I can think about the other thought and then I can put them together and see what what chat GPT came up with versus what I'm coming up. Right. With. As a thought partner, I actually did a training um, or I, I went to a training on just that. And then I created, so from this training, the guy, you know, you know, in this training just kind of says, okay, just do this. And I was like, oh, I hadn't thought about it. And he spoke to how he's using it as a thought partner, mm -hmm. but he keeps mm -hmm. feeding it. Hey, this is what you told me to do. Here are the results. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest now? And then it mm -hmm. was like kicking out some, and I was like, oh, but then he went a step further. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a dime on y'all. I'm going to drop drop a dime on y'all. I'm going to drop some dimes all in your pocket so you can pick them up. Yeah. So he said, then what he did was he created a custom GPT based mm -hmm. on that framework. So, yeah. of course, your boy, you know, using my own framework of learn, create, get paid, I mm -hmm. go immediately and do exactly what he says to do created a custom my own custom gpt using a framework that i had heard i was like what is the framework here and they broke it down and i was like okay now create me a framework so that made it easier when you went and put information in right instead of having to have one long string what you end up doing is that it's got the framework so then when you feed it stuff it knows based on the what framework you yeah. have already set and yep. now you can create a, a gazillion. So, of course, I'm like, this, this is everything. Now, mm -hmm. here's what I want to show y'all. Now, you're seeing what's happening. So now you go to anybody's YouTube and go, what's the framework? Oh, get the framework. Go create your own custom GPT for you to use and for you to eventually sell. That's the idea. Go mm -hmm. make money with that. But then you start thinking, what's going to eventually happen? So now I'm playing offense and defense. Red team, blue team. I'm a military mm -hmm. guy. So <laughs> I think, okay, eventually, eventually people are going to go, wait a minute. Why should I put anything out? And people are just basically going to steal it, create frameworks off of my work, and then blah, blah, blah. So you think in the future a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the now. Here's the future. Eventually, people are going to start gating their stuff. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be gated because they're going to mm -hmm. go, they're going to figure out these LLMs, large language models are using my stuff to train their stuff. I need to get paid for this. So now mm -hmm. if you're thinking what's not here yet, but you can see it coming soon. And then if you get any inkling that somebody's already doing it, like Medium, 
if you notice, you go to read a medium person, they'll say, hey, if you want to get more of their stuff, become a member to their whatever. Right. It's frustrating because you really want to read that article. It used to be free. Now, Medium is giving you the opportunity to say, would you like to put this behind a bit of a wall? Hmm? Paywall, whatever wall. Patreon, put it behind a paywall. Invite That's people into the, that part so you yep. can get ahead of the game a little bit if mm -hmm. you so desire. While at the same time, utilizing what's available to you right now. That's it. That's it. And with, with me, with the, the one thing that the guy talked about with writing the newsletters, it was you want to get good at figuring out what people want to know about first. So generally, if you're going to do a, a newsletter, something like that, a couple of steps. First step, mm -hmm. get used to doing it for free first so that you can know that people actually are paying attention to your content, that people are actually looking at it, that you're actually saying things, because that's going to train you in all the kind of the, the steps that are necessary to be effective and efficient, just writing a newsletter consistently. Then once you get good at that and you know that you kind of got your finger on the pulse of your people, now you go to a paid one because you don't have to do kind of product market fit and, and, and figuring it all out mm -hmm. while you're trying to do all the things. Mm -hmm. And so like for, I know for me, my kind of the, what I've committed to for right now is I'm going to do a newsletter, uh, uh, a free newsletter, for the next year, I'm going to try to do a weekly free newsletter, at least one. I'll probably do a, a number of them. And then over time, sometime during that year, my goal is to then launch a paid newsletter. But I want to yeah. get into the habit of doing that free one yeah. and get really good at it and get those numbers up. Because here's the other beauty of doing a free one. A free one still adds to your email list. A free one still adds yeah. to your... Yes. So... You might not monetize it directly right then, but it's still you you have an opportunity to monetize it. Build the community. And as as Randy says, you get you get paid to get paid. Get build the community. So let's let's take that even now. Again, business ideas, y'all. This is what we're dropping <laughs> into your into your lap right now. So build the community. This is something that I gleaned from uh Greg Eisenberg. Um and um he has a, a startup startup ideas podcast. So anyway, mm -hmm. he talks about this a lot. He says, build the community, or build the audience, then the community, and then monetize mm -hmm. the community. So audience, mm -hmm. people are paying attention to your thing. Then you invite them to a membership opportunity. Hey, this is, and then that's the, um, if in essence, productizing the fact that people says, yeah, I want some exclusivity. Right. And that because that becomes a thing, I want to just hear your stuff and I don't want everybody else to hear it. So that becomes a um, an opportunity to ask for for me to close this off, to paywall this. This is what it's going to cost you. Right. And then um, I literally the other day was out fishing and I had to, you know, my headset on and, and I was listening to Greg talk about this and I says, hmm. And then he says, eventually, what you look at it as is access. The community is access that mm -hmm. people get in to be a part of. It's kind of like yes. what Sam talk, does over at Hampton, you know. And, mm -hmm. and here's one thing. I was looking for your email. That's why I was looking down. You know, I was looking for um, mm -hmm. Rob's legacy, legacy Builder Breakfast. Guess what my news newsletter would be about? Just saying. I, I, I kid you not. That's the repurpose mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. And guess who's already in it? So the little tips and tricks and stuff like that, that they talk about then becomes contentable without obviously, you know, um, sharing anybody's details, da, da, da. But you're also mm -hmm. acknowledging people's, you know, presence, existence and da, da, da. Mm -hmm. and, and the stuff that they, mm -hmm. that could be a driver because people want to be, you know, their life validated with their give back opportunities. And this is, this is what the mm -hmm. legacy builders breakfast is about. So my mm -hmm. newsletter is legacy builders breakfast, legacy builders breakfast. And you mm -hmm. know, the stuff that we get into, you're going to have gems from it. Cause I've been to a couple of them and there's always gems dropped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now people are going right. And then at some point, let's say this thing is, you know, really popular. You've got, I don't know, 500,000 people that are 
not in Grand Rapids or not in Michigan, not in Kentwood, not in, you know, wherever. But they still want to know what's going on over there, that legacy build, builder's breakfast. Now you have a community of a whole bunch of people. That newsletter, therefore, becomes sellable mm -hmm. because someone wants access to. That's the point. Y'all seeing it? Because mm -hmm. somebody wants access to this. Like if you notice, HubSpot has been rolling up a lot of newsletters. Because they figured out, wait a minute, we sell a CRM. They're competing against other ones on, you know, the high levels and the schools and all that kind of stuff. And they're saying, but if I got it, if I pay them X amount of dollars, I get access to their email list. I get access to their stuff. And then I will sponsor their podcast. So I get access to it's brilliant. Listeners. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind acquisition 101. The people Go that are on the podcast out. make money. They can justify the time they're spending doing the thing. It becomes mm -hmm. a massive flywheel. So if you mm -hmm. break that that concept down and you go, how can I do that without being HubSpot? Mm -hmm. Right? I would yep. literally, Legacy Builder Breakfast Newsletter, right? Mm -hmm. LBBM. <laughs> Where, and then your job then, of course, is to intersperse from this this is what was garnered. It mm -hmm. goes out to the community themselves and they go, oh my gosh, you know what? Rob recognized me yep. today. I got the floor yep. and I dropped dimes. And then you take that and have ChatGPT help you with, now mm -hmm. let's take some of the lessons, distill them out and you sell. Oh gosh, man. Yep. If y'all are listening right now and you haven't <laughs> already says, I got to make sure I'm listening to these dudes all the time. Right, listening to these dudes all the time by saying I'm subscribing and I'm sharing. Yeah, and I don't know what to say about. <laughs> You've made it this I far, it. then you know exactly what this is about. Let's get that yeah. money from what you already have done. Okay, mm -hmm. that's that's an idea. Right. Rob, what idea do you have? Now I'm gonna what? throw I'm gonna throw one back <laughs> at you because I took I I wrote down the the Legacy Builders newsletter. You were right in my pocket because we're starting the Legacy Builders Academy. And the Legacy Builders Mastermind is um, getting ready to launch. And so one of the things that we're going to do, and I love the idea of having one of the one of the newsletters in there to be about the Builders Breakfast. So that idea is definitely getting implemented. So here's the thing I want to talk to you about. And I, I haven't seen it yet. So I'm assuming that it doesn't exist, but I know you're, you've got your make money online stuff, right? Make every dime online, brother. all this stuff. Right. And so what I want you to think about is this. A lot of the stories that you and I talk about kind of off camera that, 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 that don't make the cutting room floor, as they say. I think that if you were putting together those stories of all the people that you're helping, basically testimonial stories, but right. Names are changed to protect the innocent. Right? Um, but if you were putting out that as a newsletter, your make money online newsletter, where it's literally just. The funny thing about it, I know this. Y'all don't, y'all don't know it as much because y'all don't talk to Randy as much as I do. But I know that every week he's basically helping people to figure out how to make money online or figuring out how to monetize their life. He literally story after story after story after story. Hey, I told him to do this and it worked. Hey, I told him to do this and it worked. Hey, I told here's my pushback or push to you. If you went every week and just did a, 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 a download of here's what I did this week. Here's who I helped make money this week. And then you wrote an article about the, or, you know, a newsletter about the problem, the solution and how it worked. Literally you're keeping a journal, but you're keeping people interested. And now they're seeing different ways that they can do that yes. same thing with the, with the builder's breakfast. And you can highlight businesses if they want to be highlighted. So if they want to be kind of in front, then you can do a testimonial, say feature. this is their business, this is what they do, give them a feature. If they don't want to, you just tell the story and it's not, and you change the name so that nobody knows who the business is. But either way, I think that, right, you bring people to that space because one of the things that I've always admired, like one of the reasons why we became friends is because you are so committed to helping specifically beginning entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs at every level of the, the spectrum, but specifically beginning entrepreneurs to really understand how to get their feet wet in this thing. Yes. And I think that, you know, creating I, that community where people I know accept that, that challenge. There we go. I accept that. I, in front of all 15 people that might be listening, 
Mm-hmm. I accept that challenge. I kid you not. I, it's yeah. already it's already in the works. Literally, it's already in the works. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm going to break something down for you. Myla, M-Y-L-A, Myla. Yeah. Millie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or Miley. I'm saying Myla, My, Miley. And then mm-hmm. um, I had another one. It was like, here's Mama. Here's <laughs> My, Myla is Mama. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Millie was child. So monetize your life mm-hmm. ideas. So that's a, mm-hmm. uh, and then um, Miles, mm-hmm. Miles. So it was Miles, Myla, and 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 um, Miley. Mm-hmm. So these are all acronyms for mm-hmm. Monetize Your Life Academy, mm-hmm. where I teach you these Monetize Your Life strategies, um, Monetize Your Life ideas. Where I'm dropping within the academy all the ideas, blah 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 blah, and then Miles, utilizing the Monetize Your Life system. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's all now monetize your life news. That's a new kid. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I to like spell it. his my, my, let's see, <laughs> what's his name? Milne? Milne? Yeah, we 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 messed his name up. <laughs> so M Y L N E Milne? Okay, all right, yeah, it's Millie's, Millie's, Smiley's little brother. <laughs> Leave him alone. All right, he's got a messed up name. But anyways, mm-hmm. that's that's the concept and that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. And I accept the challenge. I'm literally going to be fourth quarter. Rob, I got to share this with the, with the audience. We got 10 minutes before we kind of jump off. Mm-hmm. I thought about something. I noticed that, if you notice recently, Kendrick Lamar dropping singles. Drake dropping singles singles Beyonce drop whole albums so I wrote about this I said and I wrote I just kind of see the reaction I says hey as a consultant as coaches as entrepreneurs couldn't we also drop albums mm-hmm. couldn't we also drop mixtapes you see y'all if y'all can't if you're hearing mm-hmm. this and you can't see me I'm doing air quotes couldn't <laughs> we also drop singles so mm-hmm. I decided to take that approach. So I'm coming up with an album of courses. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be dropping. So it might be nine courses. Mm-hmm. 15 courses album. Mm-hmm. Why should I have to drop just one? But if I, in the mix of all of that, want to drop another um, single. single, single could be a webinar, single could be a course, single could be just and mm-hmm. it just, my mind just opened up when I says, look at it like that framework wise. And then mm-hmm. don't worry about the fact that, oh my gosh, I'm getting ready to put nine courses on the marketplace. No, you're getting ready to do an album of. Mm-hmm. And the, with yeah. albums, we take the songs we like. Yeah, exactly. But you can buy the whole album. Now, I love it. And and one of the things that's funny, I was I've been thinking is this is why we mastermind because we we on the same wavelength a lot of times. I've been thinking about it from not the the creative music perspective, but the creative comedy perspective. If you know like what com- what comedians do before they put a special out, they go and they workshop material. Yes. And so Ooh, they go cool. to different clubs and they tell jokes and they test the joke and they, t- they they tweak it and they do this and they do it. And then eventually it winds up in um a special. And Right. I, you know, I'm working on, you know, we've been talking about our courageous cur- uh, communication curriculum and the the talk has always done well. I've done it, you know, for a number of years now. And every time I walk away from the talk, people are like, oh, my God, it's, it's amazing. I want to get more. And before there wasn't really more that we had other than just kind of direct coaching. Mm-hmm. And so I've started kind of building some stuff and we built a professional development program, but I'm workshopping some of the stuff because I want to make sure that it's got just enough and not too much. Right. And so one of the things that I've got coming up here shortly, we're about to roll this out in just a little bit is going to be. So the professional development program has six modules. And what we're going to do is roll out a webinar series where we're going to be workshopping it. So people are going to be able to get it for free. They'll be able to see it, be involved in it, get it for free because they're part of the workshopping, right? 
It's like me doing a, you know, open mic, going to the laugh factory and just getting on the mic for a little while and test some stuff out. They'll get to see it in its general, almost done form, but they'll get to see it and get the feedback because then we're going to do paid version. And then eventually we're going to have, we have the, the, perf- the, the paid workshop that we actually do with organizations because we're actually going to be taking people through and trans and giving them transformation in every module. And that's one of the biggest the, the, the biggest things that I've started to do now, instead of, I used to feel like it had to be ready before I put it out. Yeah. Now what I realize is it's mostly, it's 80%, 70%, 80% there. And you workshop. And I've got to start getting used to and getting into the habit of workshopping. Right. I love that. I love that. You all hear drop. that? Everybody out there listening right now, my perfectionist, my, my um, recovering perfectionists. <laughs> yeah. Which is everybody. But you know, again, perfectionism, and that need for it is just a, a friend of fear. Friend mm-hmm. uses everything it can to supposedly keep you out of danger. And that mm-hmm. is the danger of shame if it don't work, the danger of whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. But there is no dinosaur chasing you. It is mm-hmm. not. So put these things out, change the framework so you can feel better doing it. That's what I have to do sometimes. Change the framework. Oh, no, I'm just mm-hmm. workshopping this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, or I'm just I'm testing out material. Yeah, right. If nobody comes to my show, right, that tells me a story. Either I had the wrong mm-hmm. venue, the wrong information, or I just didn't let enough people know about it. Mm-hmm. Whether yep. they come or not, two or three people come, you still get a chance to work out your yeah. material. Yeah, Are y'all and hearing feeling that? better about doing it multiple times. Something else that I learned, I was I've been watching a lot of like you know. Les Brown, you know, professional speakers, different people, yeah. and a lot of comedians, a lot of a lot of actors, a lot of a lot of that. Something that, that amazed me, and I thought about this for a minute, like how many scenes and how many shots and how many takes and how many when, when we go to the movies or you go and see somebody that's doing a, a speech, how many times they've practiced that, right? Yeah, you know, I used to uh do singing and stuff when when I was younger. And one of the things that I that I had lost and forgot was how many times we would practice, like not just the whole song, like a specific run, a specific part. When I was going to perform, when I was getting on stage to do something, I would go over and over and over again so that I knew, OK, I need to make sure that I breathe like this here. Mm-hmm. And I had gotten out of the habit of practicing because I had gotten so into just showing up and, and performing. Right. And I had gotten out of the habit of practicing. And so this is this is me kind of jumping back into the habit of. Practicing this craft so that I can continue to be at the top of the craft when I'm on stage. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. like even being willing to do that be, and, and, and being excited about doing that, that was a kind of mind shift, mindset shift that I had to go through to get to that point where it's like, oh, yeah, I'm actually. If I practice, I'm really, really good. Right. And you just get used to being kind of above average if you don't practice. But if you practice, you can be outstanding. Man. That's that that's that repetition we talk about. Mm. Got to get in your reps, reps in. When you're creating an empire, right now, I call this digital real estate empire. By doing these different things, these little things, they become reps. I was listening to a podcast with Jason Freed on it, and he's the founder of, you know, Basecamp and all these different things, right? And you know, multimillionaire, blah, blah, blah. And he, he says, you know, he says, we've gotten away from just doing stuff. Mm-hmm. He was talking with Greg Eisenberg. I sent them a, a, a probably a too long comment. <laughs> right now, I do that strategically because some people see that and they go, "Who's that guy?" Mm-hmm. And they look you up, right? Mm-hmm. So, and if you got a lot of digital doorways that lead you to dollars, okay, all right, y'all get it. <laughs> digital doorways that lead you to dollars. Just, just keep that one. So, the, but I commented and I says, "I accept that challenge." Of just creating things, putting them out there and saying, here. Yep. Yeah. Here. Here you go. Now, of Mm -hmm. course, I'm, you know, gonna have a doorway to some opportunity where they can go, you want you want more stuff from me? Right. I've learned some things. I've been talking and and putting uh age groups behind stuff because I looked at the trends and videos and says, Hey, if you're 40, you should be on YouTube. If you're 50, mm-hmm. you should be on YouTube. Why? Mm-hmm. And then you can speak to that depending on where you're at in age, right? Mm-hmm. If you're 40, you can say every 40-year-old should have a YouTube channel. Why? Because you've learned some stuff. 
it's, it's hard to watch a 22 year old talk about stuff that you're going, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. We were doing that in, in the in the nineties, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And y'all, y'all was born in the nineties. Shut up. <laughs> that part. So, you know, it becomes, I think, I think this is the age of opportunity. Mm-hmm. And now that we have our um, AI and soon AI, no, right now, AI agents, I've been using some the other day, AI agents mm-hmm. that you could just sit there and converse with. Mm-hmm. I had a piece of a writing arrive that was too early. I was like, you can sit in a room and make millions. And I was like, mm-hmm. nobody's going to read that. So I never, <laughs> I, I even got, I saw a video that I made of it from 2017. Wow. That I says, you in a room making millions. And I showed my little room, you know, the office and stuff like that. I had a day bed in there at the time and all this kind of <laughs> stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. But it was a little early, but now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with your AI agent that you, you talked about just being able to sit there and just converse with mm-hmm. Right. I was with, let's uh, see another guy, Dominic uh, Ashbury, young kid, young guy talking about the same thing. And um, he says, he just sits there with his, his agent. We know Sam mm-hmm. Austin just sit, Sam Altman just sits there with his agent mm-hmm. or his mm-hmm. AI and talks to it. It talks back. And mm-hmm. where have we seen that before? I am <laughs> Tony Stark. Come on. Yeah. This is the time. We'll help you. If you need a little, oh, I'm not techie and all that kind of stuff. You don't need to be techie. That's for them. Mm-hmm. You just yep. need to be you. Yeah. Right. We'll, we'll walk you through how to do this stuff. If you want to work with us in that. And this is not a, this is not a call for business. Cause we're busy mm-hmm. as is, but if you need to help and want to help, then mm-hmm. you have the right to be able to ask us. Could you work with us? Could you work with me? Whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Rob. What, you know, I think that might be it, man. I love I it. I love it. Done well. Let's go, right. brother. Let's go. I got some. I got some newsletters to go write. <laughs> All right. We'll we'll talk to you on the next one, y'all. Yeah.